many had a good week? Good. Let's take a moment and turn to the Lord, shall we? Father, we uh, come before you this morning. And I think of all the business of what goes on, I think of the past week, even today, things going on. We want to stop and remember you, Father. Remember the Lord Jesus who's given his life for us that we can have forgiveness of sins. And we need you close to us. We need you in our hearts. We need you helping us from day to day. And I think the times when you sometimes seem far away, um, bring us to moments when you draw close to us and encourage us. And so this morning as we open your word, encourage us in you that we'd be strengthened to stand close to you. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you would, um, take your Bibles. If you don't have a Bible, grab one out of the pew. Um, we're going to be in Matthew uh, 17 and 18. I think it kind of goes together. As I look at this, Matthew 17 ends up and it starts chapter 18. If I was putting out, you know, that's not ordained or by God, the, the chapters part of it. That was probably 300 years after the time of Jesus. They sat down, looked at the scrolls or whatever they were looking at and said, you know what, we need to take these here and figure out how we're going to get to certain places. And so they, they laid down the, line, the chapters and the verses. I would make chapter 17 go all the way up to the end of verse 8 of chapter 18. I don't know if that makes any sense to you. Because it kind of so that's where I'm sharing today. I'm going to be in 17 and 18. But you know, my sister, uh, we do, on, on Wednesday nights we have a, we go down to Bryan County Jail and do a Bible study down. I don't go every week. I'm kind of more of a fill-in. Um, and I ride with my sister Judy. Some of you know Judy, and we compare notes. And she tell she told me about some of the stuff she'd been sharing. And one time she said, you know, she had done a um, done like two or three parables. And then she always concludes when she does that particular lesson. She says. It says, it's the last, it's verse 8 of 18. When the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? And so she's challenging the gals. She does the gals, and when I go, I do the guys. Um, she challenges, she's teaching these gals. A lot of them never heard about Jesus before. Um, tell them about the Lord. She said, will you have faith? And challenges the girls to put the young, young ladies, older ladies, to put their faith in the Lord Jesus. And that phrase stuck in my mind, will he find faith on earth? And I thought, you know what? I want to do a lesson on that myself, maybe at jail, maybe even here. So I put on a post-it note, well, we just got through Joshua, and I thought, that's where I'm going. And so let's take a look at that. Let's just actually, I'm going to jump you right to the very end there, chapter, eight, um, chapter 18, verse 8. You guys find that? And I'm actually just going to do that last phrase there and ask you a question or two about it. It says, however, when the Son of Man comes... Will he find faith? And this is in Luke. I'm sorry, did I say Luke? Oh, man, sorry. I'm going to give you a moment to get to Luke. <laughs> do you need a Bible drill? How many of you guys did Bible drills when you were a kid? Or our kids still do them? Oh, man, some of you haven't raised your hand. I'm going to teach you Bible drills. Yeah, I'm sorry, get you to Luke 18, last line of uh, verse 8 there. When you hear the pages quit rustling, I'll know that it's time to read. <laughs> Luke 18, verse 8. See that last line there? It says, however, verse 8. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? Who's the Son of Man? You guys, this is a church. When I teach a lot of times, I'm going to ask you some questions. Sometimes you need to respond. Sometimes you don't need to. This is one you need to, okay? Who's the Son of Man? Jesus. Okay, so you can put Jesus' name in. Instead of saying Son of Man, when Jesus comes, will he find faith on earth? When Jesus comes. So when is Jesus coming? What, well, like kind of, when do, you, what do you think? Soon? Whenever he's here. It could, be, it could be this next week, right? Right? We don't know. As we look at what's going on in the world today, we know that Jesus could come possibly. We see things lining up and over, over in Israel we realize we're probably getting close. And so this is verses actually talking to us today. It says, if Jesus comes, if Jesus comes in this next week, will he find faith on earth? Okay, how many of you have people in your life that are Christians or call themselves Christians that have maybe turned away from the Lord? When I was a kid growing up, we did a lot of church stuff. I went to church, 
youth group, I sat with a bunch of, like, at, at school, I went to the public school in Hinkley here, we sat at a table where all the youth group kids from a couple, three different churches got together, maybe more than that even, but we would sit at a table, um, went to camp, and there was a lot of people, a lot of young people by that I went, they grew up with that called themselves Christians. And now if you were to go back and look each one of them up, there's a, quite a few of them who one time said, or would raise their hand and say, I'm a Christian, that today would either say no, or if you looked at their lives, are not, or would, would, you would say they are not Christians. Okay? And so this verse is asking this question, is saying, when Jesus comes, if he comes back in here in the next in the near future, will he find faith? On earth and so to this morning what I want to teach you is that we're in this world where a lot of people have called themselves Christians or maybe raised their hand or called on the Lord but maybe they have turned away and so Jesus is going to give us an encouragement to stay true to him to the end okay and he tells the story in 18 I'm going to back you up to chapter 17 and if you get fine verse 20 Okay, chapter 17, verse 20. And I'll just read a little bit, and then I'm going to talk about it. It says, Once, having been asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, Jesus replied, The kingdom of God does not come with careful observation, nor will people say, Here it is, or there it is, because the kingdom of God is within you. Okay, so you've got to get a picture here. What's going on in this situation? I don't know where Jesus is at at this moment. He might have been down. A lot of times he taught by the sea. We know that, right? And there's a large group of people. Or maybe he's on a busy, crowded city street talking. But somebody in the back raises their hand. And Jesus looks back there, or wherever this guy is at, and says, got a question? And he said, yes. When is the kingdom of God coming? What did Jesus answer? Help me out here. What did Jesus say? You can't see it. And he said, you can't go to it. But where is the kingdom of, of God going to be? Where's it at? It's in your heart. It's within you. Okay? See, the Jewish people, if you remember, the Jews, they've got the scriptures. They've been studying it. And it talks about a king. It talks about a king coming. Um, there's... Um, like if you go to the scripture, like um, how many know Micah five two? Do you may know that one? It says um, that's about like when Jesus is born. Out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel. So the Jews that would study the scripture, they knew that that scripture that talked about Jesus being born in Bethlehem. They knew there was a ruler coming. That they studied, they see it in the scripture. They also saw Zechariah talks about, and we get this on Palm Sunday. Zechariah wrote, he said, you're going to see your king come uh, riding on a donkey. You guys know the Lord's Prayer? Jesus had already done this teaching. How's the Lord's Prayer go? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be, thy uh, hallowed, hallowed be thy name. What's the next line? Thy kingdom come. So if you were Jewish and you've been sitting there listening to Jesus, you start, you're thinking, wow, he's talking about your kingdom come. When is that going to be? And that guy, that's why the guy raised the question. When is Jesus' kingdom coming? And Jesus goes in this answer that kind of throws them off. He says, you're not going to be able to see it. You're not going to be able to go to the place where it is. Why? Because the kingdom of God is in your heart. Okay? Now, the scripture is a little confusing here because we know, that it is, we know that in Revelation talks about Jesus does come back and he's going to set up a kingdom. But there's also a kingdom that goes on in their hearts. And Jesus goes on to start talking and explain what's coming in the future. Move forward in chapter 17. Look to verse 22. He says, Jesus tells the, the, the people that are listening there, he says, um, The time is coming when you will long to see one of the days of the Son of Man. Who's the Son of Man again? Jesus. He says, you don't want to see one of the days when I was here with you. But you will not see it. And he said, men will tell you, here he is, or there he is. Do not go running off after them. Okay, I'm going to stop there just for a second. If you remember, you guys know how scripture went, right? Jesus was born, then he was crucified. What happened next? 
rose again. What happened then? Then he went back to heaven, right? So there was a time when he was with him, he was there teaching him. And what happened to the Christians after that time? A lot of persecution. And for those that had been living there at, when Jesus was walking the earth, they, under, they, they remembered those days with Jesus. And there were some tough times. There was times when people wanted to kill Jesus. But now it's them. And people were trying to kill them. People were throwing them in jail. People were whipping, were whipping them. And he said, the day is going to come where you're going to wish I was here. Oh, I wish Jesus was here because he knew how to handle this situation. But he says, you're not going to see that. But he, tell, he was on an inkle. He says, you, know, you guys know what an inkle is? Does anybody play cards around here? Only the old people know this. There's a game we play where you ankle. Ankle means he's going to give him a clue what's going to happen, okay? He's going to give him a clue that the day is going to come. He said, well, I'm going to come back. He says, and he says how did, did, this, did you catch what I read there? How is he going to come back? What's it going to look like when he comes back? Do you guys got it over here? I saw a hand signal or something there. It says like lightning. How does lightning go across the sky? How long does it take? Shoo. If you see lightning, it, it goes across the sky so fast. And Jesus says, I'm going to come back like lightning. I'll read just a little bit more there. Um, uh, the Son of Man in his days will be like lightning, which flashes and lights up the sky from one end to the other. But first he must suffer many things and be rejected by this generation. He's talked about his crucifixion. And then he says, okay, I'm going to stop there. I'm going to uh, throw something in here. If Jesus comes back like, like by, by lightning, he, he goes on to explain to him, he says, don't, when someone says that here's Jesus over here in this town, should you believe him? No, because Jesus is going to come back in a flash. That's how the return of Christ is going to be. And so beware of the false, the false people that say they're Jesus, okay? But he says, here's what it's going to be like in that Jesus is going to come in a flash. And he says in verse 26, it says, just as it was, in the days of Noah, so also will it be in the days of the Son of Man. People were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage up to the day that Noah entered the ark. Then the flood came and destroyed them all. Okay, put yourself in the time of Noah, right? Noah's been out there building the ark. How long did it take Noah to build the ark? How many, what did you say, Myron? Try again. Huh? 120? It's around 100. I don't have, I didn't go nail down the detail, but you can kind of figure out from the scripture. About 100 years. For 100 years, you didn't have chainsaw. And it's a big, it's a big boat, right? All right. So for 100 years, Noah's been building the ark. People have been looking at this, laughing at Noah, and saying, this guy's a fool. Okay? And so finally the ark is done, and then the day comes when God... And this is the first kind of clue that people should get concerned, right? Was when the animals all started going up on their own, just marched their way into the ark, right? And everybody's, maybe they scratched their head a little bit, but they're still kind of laughing, all right? And then Noah's in there for about a week's time before the rain. God shuts the door, and Noah's like locked in the ark. Hot, humid probably, and smelly animals. And I'm sure at that point he's probably thinking, did I make a mistake? Did I get something wrong? But what happens after a week? The thunder starts. The rains come down. And that morning that the thunder started, everybody woke up thinking, it's another normal day. I got plans. I got to mow the grass. I got to plant some corn. I got a graduation to go to. Maybe someone's getting married. Right? It's a normal day, right? But the thunder started and the rains came. And it didn't stop raining for 40 days. And there were people pounding on the ark saying, let me in, let me in. But it was too late. Jesus says, that's what it's going to be like when he comes back. He's going to come in a flash. And he says, the day that that happens, people are going to wake up in the morning. And it's going to be just like the days of Noah. They got their plans. They think this is another normal day. But guess what? It's the day that Jesus shows up. I'm going to fast forward you just for the sake of time here. It's at that point, he goes through the, another illustration of Lot and some stuff there. And he gets to chapter, it's about like in chapter 18 there. And that's when he tells the story about the unjust judge. Okay, he kind of totally shifts 
All of a sudden, Jesus starts giving an illustration. He says there was a judge. Okay, let's read it. First of all, I'm going to get you chapter 18, verse the first verse. And he's got, um, Jesus told his disciple a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. He said, in a certain town, there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared about men. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with the plea, grant me justice against my adversary. And for some time, he refused. But finally, he said to himself, even though I don't fear God or care about men, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually wear me out with her coming. Okay, I'm going to stop. You got a picture of what happened there? Okay. Who's the main character here, maybe? I, there's a couple of main characters. Who's one of them? The female. The widow, right? She's a vulnerable lady, right? Um, quick, quick story from my own life. My grandma, some of you guys knew my grandma Johnson, mother of seven kids. My grandma was, was separated from her husband. She never got divorced, but she had seven kids, okay? And as life went on, um, the kids kind of moved out, and she lived alone. And for a long time, she didn't have electricity till like way into the 70s or something like that. She didn't actually get running water till like in the 90s. But she relied a lot on her kids to take care of her, right? She burned wood for heat. And when the days came when she started getting on in life, she could, it was not as easy for her to pump the, the pump. It was not as easy for her to carry in the wood. And so she would look to us. And that's a picture of a, a, like a widow. In those days, they didn't have all the programs. This lady, is Jesus tells the story, probably did not have any kids. And so she, in this story here that Jesus is telling, she's got an issue. Probably it's a legal issue or something going on. She's got a guy, someone that's come into her life that's given her problems. And she doesn't have anybody she can go to, so who does she go to? She goes to a judge. Okay. Now remember, I tell this story at the jail this last Wednesday. And I say, okay, so what's this judge like? He says, I don't care what people think, and I don't care what God thinks. That's his attitude in life. And I told this to the guys that are there because they're hoping for a merciful judge. I said, you do not want this judge, okay? But this guy, even though he doesn't care about people and what God thinks, this lady keeps coming back and bugging him. And finally says, you know, if she would have had a cell phone, she'd been calling him all the time, right? She didn't have a cell phone. She just had to keep going to his house, okay? And so finally he says, you know what? This lady keeps coming and bothering me. I don't care what God thinks. I don't care what people think. But so she doesn't wear me out, I'm going to give her what she needs. I'm going to take. I'm going to go and sell, sell this account with this guy that's bothering her, and that's what happens. And Jesus makes a point of it in three and verse six. There, he said, "Listen to what the unjust says, and will not God bring about justice for His chosen ones who cry out to Him day and night? Will He keep putting him off? I tell you." He will see that they get justice and quickly. What's Jesus' point in telling this story? He told the story about the widow, right? And the unjust judge. He says, if this guy that doesn't even care about God or men will take care of this widow, we have a heavenly father that takes care of us, right? Now we need to bring this back to the context where, where we're at, okay? We're, Jesus is talking about the end times coming, right? In the last times... It's going to be difficult to be a Christian. There's going to be people that don't like you because you're a Christian. You're going to look around and see people you know that turn away from the Lord. You remember what the first verse of chapter 18 said? Why did he tell this? He told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. See, when that day rolls around, we're getting toward the end times and things get a little bit tougher. And it's easy for people to turn away from the Lord. What should you do to stay close to the Lord? Always pray, not give up. The, the King James Version says, don't lose heart. It's easy when you see your friends turn away from the Lord, people you grew up with that knew about the Lord, and they don't, you know, maybe you went to church with them. 
Maybe you went to camp with them, and maybe they're not following the Lord anymore. It's easy to give up. And Jesus is making a point. He says, you know what? You need to hang in there with the Lord. You need to be on your knees praying, sticking close to the Lord. About the time that Judy shared this with me, I shared a prayer request in church here one morning because there's a couple guys that I know of that are close to me. And the one guy, I, you know, I remember the first time I met him, and actually I'd heard about this guy being a Christian, and I went to like a 4th of July party at his house, and he had invited a lot of people in. A lot, there were a lot of Christians there, but there was a lot of people from the community that were not. And here goes this guy, and he stands up in front of the group, and he gives, he gives thanks for the food. And in his prayer, he does almost like a salvation message. It was kind of a long prayer, to be honest with you. But he stands up and thanks the Lord Jesus for dying our, for our sins, that we can be forgiven and made right before the Lord. I don't remember all his words were. But he, does, he says this, right? And a half a dozen weeks or so ago, I run across this guy, and he's in a tough spot in life. Things are not, he's going through some struggles. And the joy of the Lord's not with him in that moment that I saw him. And I'm concerned for this guy. What did Jesus say? When the Lord Jesus comes, will he find faith on earth? And this guy is facing this in his life. Will that happen to you? Where will you be? If the Lord hangs on for five more years, where will you? Some of you guys are young. You're probably still in high school. Some of you are out of high school and college. Five more years. What can happen in five years? Will you get challenged in your faith? Some of you that are older, what might come into your life that will challenge your faith? If the Lord Jesus were to come back in five years, will he find you faithful? The challenge is to stay close to the Lord. He told them this parable that they should always pray not give up and so that's my challenge to you walk close to the lord the other guy that was that, that about five six weeks ago i would talk to struggling in his faith too you know what he told me we're kind of going through something he's asking me some questions and he said you know he said i quit praying and that's concerning to me because this is a guy who confesses the lord jesus and he's at a point in his life where he says i'm not praying anymore we just, what did Jesus tell us to do? Keep praying. You know, when you get to them really tough spots in your life and you really wonder what God is doing or why you don't see some answers, or, you know, just you're, maybe you're fighting a temptation. Or I, you know, I go with these, the other interesting, back to the jail thing, I run across these guys down there. Some of them are actually, I believe, Christians. Because I look at them and they, they tell me what's going on. I'm, I, the one guy said, he's a Christian. He says, you know, I use meth. It helps. It's like you guys, a lot of you guys, how many people drink coffee in the morning to get going? Okay? This guy says, I use meth. He says, it helps me get going in the morning. But he's a, but he's a Christian. And he realized he should not be doing that. Okay? But I shared this with him. Okay? Because he needs, he needs to hang close to the Lord. He need, you need, some of that stuff you need to put away from yourself, right? But you need to be on your knees. You need to fight your battles and stay close to the Lord. Father, I don't know what we face this next week. I don't know what people are going through here this morning. And whether older, older folks or young folks, if there's anybody here that is struggling in their faith, maybe one or maybe they're seeing their friends turn away from you and they're thinking, I don't know, is this for real? Reveal yourself to them, Lord. Give them your word. May they see answered prayers. Bring Christians who are devout followers you alongside of them. Help them to keep close to you in prayer. I ask this in Jesus' name. Bless us as we go from this place, Lord. Keep us, I pray in Jesus' name.